magnifying glasses. I can yeah. finish it. Yeah. I never had it. I've heard of it. Oh, you no, I never was. I saw that because I went boom when I came up. Is your mom making it? Mm -mm. We'll take a look at the no. Yeah, that was the end of the It's all awesome. How does it feel? Yeah, the building was. Yeah. 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 Go down there and watch the test. Hey, you guys, while you're standing there watching before we get started, <clears throat> um, keep a mental image in your mind. Keep going. <laughs> oh, that's all right. You can, you can walk. Keep a mental image in your mind of how Carrie's body parts line up in a dressage saddle from his shoulder to his hip to his feet. Hopefully they're in line. Sometimes he puts his feet a little far forward like all of us do in the dressage saddle. But he's actually got a saddle that fits him pretty well that forces his leg under his body. And um, because it's, it's got quite a bit in front of his knee and his thigh and the seat is in the right place. And so he pretty much keeps his leg under his body. So when you watch some of the people in jumping saddles or you watch the guy who's gonna be in an exercise saddle standing in the stirrups, you'll notice it's a similar body position, it's just that they're above the horse. Um, Kerry's getting ready for his first international competition this weekend, right? CIC One Star um, and um, at Fair Hill. I mean, at Plantation Fields. And um, so he's been going preliminary, and you have to qualify to do the one star, so he's doing that um, with one of his horses. The other one didn't quite qualify. Um, and uh, this is the horse he likes better, because it's a gelding and the other one's a mare. And this, is, this one is more forgiving um, when he doesn't sit the trot just perfectly. Um, but normally he sits the trot just perfectly, and uh, anyway, it's quite a challenge at that level, the dressage. And he's going to go down there, and he's just going to be schooling, and he's going to be practicing his dressage test <laughs> um, because it is a new test for him, and it has some movements that are a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> and we may or may not bring him back to play with him, but just go ahead and do your thing, Carrie. Okay, cool. This horse is a lovely thoroughbred. How old? And he's a um, heck of a jumper, but you won't get to see him jump today. So, oops. What uh, we're going to do is put this thing on. You hear that? Yeah. Um, start out with two horses and two riders. I'm one of them, and Matt Martinez over here is the other. Um, Matt is he's a working student here now, and he lives in this house up here with two of the other hottest young men you'll ever see. They may be at, when we go down and drink beer at the barn. I think they're going to join us. They're the vineyard boys, and <laughs> Matt's the horse boy, and they all live together in that house over there. Um, but Matt has a girlfriend, so <laughs> she's right there. Oh, so I have to watch what I say. Um, but so Matt, I wanted to have you guys watch because Matt came out here a little less than a year ago, maybe, with his dad over there, Charlie, um, when his dad was coming for a lesson. And Matt had ridden as a kid, but not, you know, not a whole lot. Lead line classes and stuff, I'm told. Maybe a little bit more than that. <laughs> a little bit more than that. Um, but then he hadn't ridden in years and years and years. But he got really good at snowboarding in the meantime. And uh, so he came out and got on his dad's horse and was just unbelievably balanced over his feet. In fact, that jump down there with the tires on it, going the away, the horses hate. And they always stop or they run out. It's just one of those jumps horses don't like. And um, Charlie's horse doesn't like it either. So Matt goes cantering on down to it. And the horse thinks he's going to stop and run out all at once and just basically, you know, stop. But Matt never moved, and the horse, the horse just didn't know what to do, and he almost fell down. So he sort of scrambled over it, 
kind of went like this, almost went down. Matt <clears throat> didn't stay on, but he landed on his feet. He just, I mean, it was like the guy's shoulders and head never moved, and he just stayed balanced as he went off the horse and landed, and, you know, a big smile on his face. Um, and so he went off and he came back <clears throat> and took a couple more lessons. And uh, next, every time he'd come back, I'd be hearing these stories about how people had him riding their horses. Like he was some kind of a professional because he was so good with them. Um, and he came back with another horse that was from their barn and started doing some basic dressage and took that one to a little event. And then I guess their farrier was into timber racing and Matt thought that looked like a lot of fun. So he started galloping racehorses and then he went to Laurel and he got a job galloping racehorses for a while. And um, next thing you know, he's got two horses off the track of his own um, and now they're here. One of them is he has actually raced on the flat in the, um, you know, the, the um, what are they called? Point to point steeplechase. Point to point circuit, you know, with the hunt clubs, which is the, the sort of the beginning level of steeplechase racing. And it's been, he's run like six, ridden in six races and, and won over brush fences. So he's kind of into that, but he came here because he's thinking he might actually want to do this professionally someday and <clears throat> broaden his expertise. And so um, he's just come, and I've just started to work with him a little bit. And what I want you to watch with him, I put him in an exercise saddle today, just so that you can see with the short stirrup um, how he can ride and what you can do. So Matt, go back to walk a set. And start to create the walk we did the other day like in a round frame. <laughs> and then when you have that, see if you can trot him like that. And then see if you can trot him like that in two points. See, I have a, I have a new sport that hasn't been created yet <clears throat> that I want to see. It's called jockey dressage, where you get jockeys and exercise riders in their racing pack, and you put them in a dressage ring, and you score them like dressage horses. Because two or three of the symposiums that we did um, where we had like really good jockeys and exercise riders riding, they got on the horses and they went like dressage horses. So I think if you're perfectly balanced and you have good hands, you can do that. So my biggest complaint with Matt with these two horses that he brought is that he like got them off the track and then he kept riding them like they were race horses, basically, because that's what he's kind of into. And so at least with this one, we want to slow his whole world down and see if we can turn him into a sport horse so that Matt can do some eventing. So he's not quite there, huh? Lengthen your stirrups. Okay. While he's doing that, I'm going to get on this other horse. <clears throat> Why don't you bring this one over here? Um, you guys, if you were here last week, you saw Scarlett on, um, on her horse, Nikos, the really light that, uh, gray. Um, who was really very, very, very fancy, um, who's off the track. So um, her mom's a sucker. She's a sucker. This is the full sister. They just had to have it. So the full sister shows up here on Mo Sunday. Monday was the first day that we rode her. And what we're doing is um, she's, she's off the track. They did a little bit of riding with her since she was at the track, but she's pretty fresh off the track. She sort of acts a bit like it, although she's being quite calm right now. Um, so on day one, what we're doing is we're training her sort of together. So I've been riding her the first few days, and then Scarlett's going to do some of it, and it's going to be a kind of a learning experience for Scarlett, um, maybe me too. But um, this horse is seven, did quite a bit of racing, you know, won like a hundred grand or so, um, and is by um, Two Punch, who's a sire that really seems to produce really, really nice moving sport horses. And he stood in Maryland as a racing sire for a long time. He died just like a year or two ago at a, up in his upper 20s. Um, and um, one of them was a four-star event horse. Um, so we know that this horse, the breeding is good. Um, and we know that his brother, her brother's a good mover. But I got on her on Monday, <clears throat> and she was hot. I got on her out here. We let her out, and then I got on her out here. And normally, if we didn't, weren't in between indoor arenas, I would get on a horse like this in an enclosed space in the indoor and just kind of slow everything down. And, but we don't have that until this new one gets built. So 
got on her out here, and she was jigging around quite a bit and quite hot, and I just felt like she was going to explode every any minute. But then by the end, she was kind of, you know, walking and trotting pretty nicely. I don't think I canned her here the first day. And then yesterday, I rode her out, and she was about twice as good. Um, she settled quicker. We did some canner. She still felt like she was going to jump out of her skin. But I wanted to ride her and see what she's like today. Um, and the reason is I want to show you guys what we do with the really hot ones off the track to try to settle them. Um, and it's basically the idea is that they're used to being ridden on the bit, on the muscle almost, I mean, with a connection. It may not be exactly what dressage people call on the bit, but it's, not, it's definitely not a loose rein. There's a connection, and they go around with their neck arched a lot of the time on the track. They don't, they're not used to much leg because the stirrups are so short, but um, they're sort of looking for some kind of a connection, and they go forward, and they want to move their feet, and they want to keep moving, and sometimes they go sideways. So um, we really try to make sure that they accept the connection in the bridle and with the and the leg at whatever pace, whether it's walk, trot, or canter, and um, and see if they'll get some comfort in that and some confidence in that. Because I find that when they don't understand the feel in the bridle, the leg, the whole connection thing very well, like a basic dressage horse, they're scared of everything. Um, so that's the goal right here is to get this horse to settle through a good basic connection. I'll get on. So Matt scene is still, this horse is going around with his head kind of up, and you can see when it goes like that, that um, it's a nice horse, definitely. I mean, I like the, the way its neck is up and it's uphill, but um, in that frame, it tends to go with kind of quick steps, a little bit of high knee action, sort of short steps, and it, you can sort of see the tension. So it's like, what do you do? Do you just drop the reins and let him go? Or do you do a better job of making him round? And I say you do a better job of making him round, and if you can't, you need to just learn to ride better so you can. So that's what Matt's going to do. Right? And actually, he did better with the longer stirrups. It is tough. It is quite tough to do good flat work with short stirrups. It's possible, though. Okay. This mare is already much more chilled than the first two days. And it's interesting that having you guys here doesn't seem to matter to her. So don't try to really make her stand, because that's probably not what she's used to from the racetrack. She's going to be so good, I'm not going to be able to show you anything fun. <laughs> but everything with her is about, you know, keeping the seat light, not surprising her, making it all consistent. Okay. Why don't you let him walk for a minute, Matt? And work with him in the walk and see if you can get him moving off your legs a little bit, you know. Smaller circles, rounder, and just kind of settle the walk. It's your best walk you can. In a minute, we'll do some pattern and some jumping out in the field. Okay. So she, you know, her, her first thing over there was to start jigging a little bit. You know, I wasn't paying much attention. Uh, so now what I'm saying is, okay, I'm just going to shorten the steps up, which allows me to put a little bit of leg on her, barely touching her with my calves. Sometimes I'm not touching her at all. But I'm sort of right now stabilizing my hand just the way I would if, you know, if somebody were leading her to the paddock before a race and they had a chain shank over her nose, they would keep her head and they would control her through her head and that would help, you know, if they just let her head go up and all over the place, she'd probably start rearing and fighting, but if she was really, really hot. But I'm actually going to just slowly, evenly on both sides, and I'm actually, sometimes I'm cheating a little, like I've got my hand on my saddle pad here, I'm not really having to grab it, but I'm making sure it's not moving. 
because I want her, like there, to be the one to find a solution, which is soften. And some people would think, oh, well, that's backwards dressage. You're worrying about their head first. You know, you're supposed to ride from your leg into your hand. That's what's supposed You know, you're supposed to push more leg than hand. And that's true in most cases, but with a racehorse, you got to start somewhere, and if the goal is to get relaxation and rhythm and softness and all that, you've got to pretty much slow their world down, and you got to start out there, unfortunately. But the good news is that it works. And usually a hot one, you know, within a week or so of some good basic flat work, they kind of then get it, they wait, <sighs> Take a deep breath and settle in, and then it's time to really learn some stuff. So, um, but I mean, with her just now, even here, she's really depending on me setting my hand, keeping her a little bit straight. <coughs> and then she says, oh, okay, the world is good. I have boundaries. All right. And I don't necessarily drop the reins when she when she gives, because if I make some big drastic move, then <clears throat> that's just going to confuse her. She might want a connection, or she might want a softer softer uh, feel down low. And I'm kind of letting her decide that. As long as she's not against my hand and her rhythm is quiet, I'm fine with whatever. Okay, so she's going to get a little jiggy here when I start to trot. But if I get left behind when she scoots, then I'm going to come back down onto her sensitive little racehorse back and piss her off. So I'm very forward, if you notice. So that I'm perfectly, as much as possible, balanced over my feet. Not ahead of her, not behind her. And then what I'm trying to do is keep her from getting ahead of me or behind me. Especially keep her from getting ahead of me. So the very worst thing that could happen is for her to bolt and me to lean back and pull. If I lean back and pull and use my upper body against her, I'm going to fall back onto her back. It should go a lot faster. So I'm going to stay a little bit forward. Sometimes almost ahead of the motion to slow it down. And then sometimes, like now, I might widen the hands to make sure that I'm channeling her straight. Other times, I might set them in front of her withers to create stability with my hands. Good. So I'm pretty happy with this. And even that downward transition right there, her first thing was, I sort of squeezed a little with my knees to stop my body from moving. And then she wasn't sure what that meant, and she started to scoot, and then she waited when I held her. And, uh, but I, I squeezed my knees because I didn't want to lean back against it. I didn't want, I didn't want to push back there, which is the go button. Okay, so now let's see if we can. And this is where she might get strong. So 
I've got my right hand on my breast on my uh, yoke, which is like a martingale strap, and I put it on the horses that I don't trust. And I've got two fingers that in case you bolt. And it's helping me stabilize my hand. I use them at the racetrack all the time. And you would think I wouldn't be using any leg, but in fact, I'm using more leg now than I was at the trot. Push it right there where she put her head up to look at the horse in front of her. She slowed down and I got to squeeze her into the bit. That was a good thing. So good. But she's got a beautiful natural canter. So I can use that to teach her how to carry herself in all the gates a little bit better. And also to get her to realize that even when her adrenaline gets up a little bit from cantering, it doesn't mean we're gonna run. It doesn't mean we are. So you can see her wiggle back and forth there. And that's okay. Okay, so here now she's getting stuck again. I'm actually pushing. Here she's coming above the bits to look at everything. So now I've got my right hand jammed to the base of her neck for stability. Because again, I don't want to pull. I just want solid boundaries for her. That she can rely on. And what I'd like now is for her to stretch down and take big steps. But she seems to do one or the other. She lowers her head and loses a little impulsion, and then picks up her head and scoots. But she's pretty much just experimenting, trying to figure out what works, where the comfort zone is, where the peaceful thing is. Now, yesterday when I canned her, getting her left lead was really hard, even though she's a racehorse. We'll see what happens. But I had to get her haunches in a little bit. And she did it by looking outside at that horse. But I had to get her haunches in a little bit. And she did it by looking outside at that horse. So now we're above the bit. And I'm not going to fight it. But I'm going to try to maintain a solid connection and get her to half halt and wait. There we go. Take a deep breath. And I'm waiting for her to settle in the canner before I go back to try to my can. Good. Like right there, any little move I make scares her. Like right there, I thought, oh, okay, I'm gonna soften my left rein pat her on the neck, and that scooped her. Okay. Good girl. And right here, I'm squeezing like a, it's like a mother, like a lot with my knees <laughs> to get her to slow down. <coughs> Which you don't hear a lot of, except in eventing, as using that as an aid. Eventers cross country, they say, yeah, squeeze your knees. You know, to half halt, when you're not sitting in your saddle, you need something to stabilize your body, slow it down, so that you're not going with the horse's motion. So that canter to trot, I really needed to be still and strong, so I just, and I'll do it again here, not squeezing hard, so that I don't have to pull the rein so much, and it really works. People are always surprised, because a lot of people get taught not to squeeze their knees. But it's an A, you do it sometimes. So. That's all she's done in the first three days. Like yesterday, that's what she did. Today, that's all she's going to do. <clears throat> and then if she ends like this, we're good, right? So that she's learned a little bit about accepting the basic aids, you know? And then ends softer and happier. Because obviously she's, um, you can sort of look in her eye. She's like, you can tell she's tough. Like a good cross-country horse would be tough. Um, and... Um, if she, you know, if she disagrees with you, then you've got trouble. But I think she's a great athlete. 
horse is going to be a great horse. Hopefully, right? <laughs> Otherwise, this training money they're paying for is going to go down the tooth. She's got, to, she's got to have some value. She's got to increase in value at least as much as the cost of training or else it'll be a waste of money. And then nobody comes back. Okay, so that's her deal <clears throat> for now. And my guess is that by the end of the month, she'll be gotten little jumps because she'll be bored. She'll need to do something. And hopefully she won't go flying when she does. We've done our, our basic flat work well. Okay, let's watch Matt here. Matt <coughs> is not got the flat work down great, but he can go out here in his little exercise saddle and jump any of the jumps out here. So let's let him do it just for fun. Matt, why don't you try out the field <coughs> and just give him a little school like you've been doing, having fun when I'm not here. You know, hop him over to the log over there. Hop them over a couple of these other things. We're going to comment just on, you know, to ignore us. Just go out and have some fun like you normally do, like you normally ride in. And then, in a minute, I'm going to introduce you to the next course. Um, um, Charlie? I'm sorry? How long has he been off the track, Nero? I think he last raced in December. Last race in December. Okay. And, um, yeah. He ran a couple of flat steeplechases, too. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I haven't even seen him go that much. We took him cross-country schooling, and so watch Matt's body. So. He goes a little faster than most of us might out there. Um, he doesn't really insist on his horse balancing, shortening its stride. Um, <laughs> but what's really cool is that Matt doesn't really move. So, even when the horse stops. <laughs> so basically, Matt learned to snowboard and <clears throat> balance over his feet on a snowboard, and then. When he rides, what I've found is that he might not know what he's doing <laughs> half the time. I mean, he's, he's learning fast, and he wants to learn, and he's smart, and he's picking it up. But because he's got such good balance, he has really good hands, and he's got really good feel. And I've actually seen, even though he wasn't too successful today on his flat work, I've seen him like put a horse together really nicely uh, with a little bit of coaching. And uh, just by being still. And if, you know, Jason Cole over here. Is that Jason? Oh, no, it's not. He just looks like Jason. <laughs> you look like Jason Cole. Sorry, my eyes, yeah. My eyes aren't very good. I thought it was somebody else. Okay, he's a steeplechase rider. Um, but anybody who's been around the steeplechase world knows that it's all about staying still and getting out of the horse's way. So, you know, really galloping a horse over jumps like that, or like they do steeplechase racing, it's really about trusting the horse, putting your hands down, balancing over your over your feet like a steer, having nerves of steel, and not moving, you know? And um, and that's what, you know, that's what Matt's good at. So if he can, and you know, you hear, you hear a lot of eventing trainers tell their students, um, you know, go to the racetrack and learn to gallop a horse. Learn what a horse can do. Or go work for, even better, a steeplechase trainer and learn to jump a horse at speed because we're all such wusses, you know. We're always, like, taking and pulling and holding and trying to shorten your stride and uh, be safe. And um, Matt doesn't look unsafe to me out there. I don't know about you guys. He looks pretty darn poised. You know, his horse is taking maybe a 15-foot stride as opposed to the 12 that we're taking. And um, you're good. You can walk, Matt. That was brilliant. <laughs> it was, actually. It looked good. Um, but it's, you know, it's not all that different than you might see Philip Dutton or like a professional event rider. You know, when you watch them cross country, you go, wow, they are so good out there. <laughs> they look good when they're not moving. And that's like the hardest, hardest, hardest thing to teach people. Um, and the horse is so appreciated. I mean, if I started jumping this horse and I started flopping around on her, she'd have a fit. But if, um, you know, if I could stay as still as Matt. And it's probably just being fit, you know. It takes a lot of strength to hold still. So that was good, Matt. You look smooth as silk. Now uh, I can't believe he stopped that first one, though. Yeah, well, 
The body didn't move. Okay. So keep that little metal image in your mind, you know, of how his feet were under him, just like Carrie's feet were under him in the dressage saddle in the beginning. I don't know if my feet were under me or not, but I was trying. And um, for different reasons.